Hello everyone and welcome to Gearock Farms. In today's video we are going to be giving you a farm update. We are going to take a look at the crops here, do some kernel counts, go check on the cover crop, take a glance at the alfalfa stand here late in the year, maybe check on a couple apple trees, and we'll also give you a brief update on some of our, our cows. So starting off here on this field next to the yard that we uh, turbo tilled and that was no-till last year, it was looking really good early on in the year. Some of the sand knolls kind of suffered when it got drier, but let's walk in here a ways and grab a cob. There we go, we're in a couple of rows here now. I've done some kernel counts on the channel before, but I'll uh, go over it with you guys again, especially for your new viewers. Find yourself a cob that best represents the entire field. You know, you don't want to pick the cob from the one little wet piece in that field or the one little dry piece. You want to pick an average or count kernels on multiple cobs and then average them out and then get their total yield per cob and then get the rough yield off all those cobs and then average them out. We'll just do one for now. So you take your cob, I like to split them in half, and then I'll count how many around there are. So let's count this guy here. 18, 18, 18 around. I'm pretty happy with that. And then let's get a length. River. River, what do you think? No, you can't have this quite yet. You gotta do a yield count. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'll give it a, a 36 by 18 long. I don't like to count the, the very bottom kernels where it rounds off or the very top where it starts to taper off. I like to count the, the best part of the cob and, and get a really conservative yield estimate. So 18 by 36. Once you get your number from your kernels around and then your kernels long, then you times that by like 0.2 or 0.3 based on your kernel size. Uh, so these kernels are looking really good. I'm, uh, I'm going to call them a, a definitely a bigger kernel. So we'll do 18 times 36 again, 648 times 0.3. That gives us 194. So uh, it's safe to say that once we uh, dry down, as we get closer to picking, you, you could say that this field is going to get us roughly 180 to 200 bushel per acre. That'd be a pretty safe conservative bet. If any of you estimate corn yield differently, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to read about it. I know there's many different ways you could count your plants within a certain amount of feet and the amount of cobs on the plant and get an average. Obviously, the more cobs you pick with my equation, the better. You get a better average. As for the turbo tilled field, pretty happy with uh, what it's doing here. We had some late summer rains that timed out really well for us. Considering the year's total rainfall, we are super happy with how this field's looking. I'm gonna head up on the hill now and uh, give you guys a better look of what's going on up there. On the way to the top of the hill here, I decided to stop at some of these apple trees. These were early bloomers. They uh, dropped their apples probably about a month ago and they're looking pretty empty so far. That tree up there, that was a good tasting apple there. And you can see on the ground here, the oaks are starting to drop their acorns as well. Currently I'm filming this on September 24th, I believe. So that gives you a date of reference. We're already done with chopping corn. That went really well. And just looking over the landscape here, you can tell that the corn is really drying down. But then off into the neighbors there, that's corn as well and you can see the sandy peaks are starting to dry down but the rest of it's still kind of green. He uh, practices no-till so our no-till field right over the knoll is very similar to that. It's a bit drier. I think it's a shorter day and it was planted a bit earlier. So things are happening. Things are things are starting to change quick in the area. I think our corn will be ready to go fairly soon here. I'm sure we'll blink and we'll be picking corn here. Things are starting to dry down fairly fast. As we walk along the alfalfa strip here, you can see where the soil type really shine through, where all the heavier soil is and then where the sandier soil is. Definitely made a difference this year. But all in all, on that good soil, that heavier soil, the alfalfa 
did really well this year. Really shine through the grass. We're gonna have some really nice alfalfa stands next year, especially if we get some average rainfall next year. And then now this apple tree on the top of the hill here, it's a bit later than those other two we just passed. They haven't all turned red yet. They're starting to, and they're a bit bigger. They're not as small and petite as the other ones. Here's a glimpse at our new seeding alfalfa field. This is where the oats were. And as you can see, the alfalfa is really starting to come through. But yet again, due to that lack of moisture, we didn't take a third crop off of this, or we didn't take a, a new seeding crop off it this year. And years prior, after we take off the oats, we're normally able to get a hay crop off of it before fall, but it just didn't have the moisture to really take off after we harvested the oats. But the stand's looking good. It's just not uh, growing super quick. So next spring, next summer, that should be one hell of an hay field. We put down some fertilizer after oats and there's enough greenery there where we shouldn't have a winter kill. So that should carry over into next year really, really well. Really looking forward to seeing what that turns out to be next year. Walking along Suicide Hill here, looking at the pastures. It's been the same story most of the year. Just a, a lack of moisture and the grass really is, is suffering. Our pastures have really dried up this year, but it's maybe not the end of the world to have the land be idle for a year. Okay, moving on to our no-till piece. We have two different varieties in here. We have a rank variety, I believe a 92 day, and then we have that pioneer variety that we had left over from when I purchased the planter. And that was also a 92 day. They had very similar traits and chemical resistant packages. Early on in the year, there was definitely a definite line of where the pioneer corn was planted versus the rank. And you can vaguely see it now, kind of in the center of the field there. If I was able to get an aerial shot with a drone or something, it would be super apparent, I think, where the, where the variety changed. Because like I said early on, it was it was pretty easy to see. But that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, there's going to be a huge yield difference. It could just be the type of variety and, and uh, when, it, when it really puts a stock on versus the other one. And maybe the other one's better at taking on the late season, even though they were the same maturity date. So we'll walk in a couple rows here, check a cob. I'm excited to see the difference the two varieties once we uh, start picking it it might be a bit easier to tell so right off the bat here i'm noticing a lot of cob variation from one plant to another there's not a crazy amount of consistency like there was in that turbo tilled ground and i think that's where the no-till suffered in a year like this year with uh, even germination. It wasn't an ideal environment with the lack of moisture early on in the year, and it definitely impacted our no-till ground. So here's a, a bit larger one. It's really good, really good, but this is probably the top end of the field from what I'm seeing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, three, four, three, five, three, six. So we'll call it 36, like that other cob. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 18 around as well. But like I said, this is the top end. And then it's neighboring cobs that look like this little guy. Or even this guy isn't uh, a huge match. So we're definitely going to see a yield decrease on this no-till ground compared to that turbo-tilled stuff in the yard. And there could be other factors too, being this field's a bit further from the barns, maybe it didn't quite get all the manure and nutrients that the other field did. But this one for sure is gonna be under that 180 bushel. Some of the cobs scream, you know, 120 to 140, but then other ones like this one that I picked for you guys, that's uh, getting closer to that 180 to 200 range. So I could see it being that 160 range. And I'm willing to bet this will probably be one of the last fields we pick. Just running through the stalks here, the stalks are a lot greener. Maybe 
the cobs themselves will dry down just as fast as our turbo tilled field. Just looking at the stalk, this one is definitely behind on drying down, which makes a lot of sense because it, it had a later start. It didn't pop up as quick and I think it was the last planted as well. These fall colors are just beautiful. I am loving walking around today. The trees are about to start changing in our area. There's already a, a couple that have started. Another week or two, it'll be all orange and yellows and reds. It'll be just beautiful out there. Okay, I'm about to the end of this no-till field. I'll check back in. We're gonna go down to the flats where we did all of our chopping. We'll check out the cobs there, do a kernel count there as well, and also check on our cover crop, see how well that's germinating. Here gives you a better look. I don't know how well the camera portrays it, but in person, this is definitely a lot drier, a lot browner. This is a lot greener, a lot wetter looking anyways. Or maybe I'm just crazy and maybe it looks all the same to you guys. Passing by the cover crop, you can see it's really starting to come in nice. But then we have patches like this here where the seed just didn't quite take yet, didn't germinate. But you can see the seed there on the ground. And today we got a shot of rain, so hopefully that'll germinate now and, and come up and help fill in some of these gaps. But where we got some nicer seed to soil contact, where we had some softer dirt and it was lined up nice with the drill, we had some pretty good emergence. It will definitely come in patchy here to start. Hopefully I didn't have any big skips with the planter or with the drill. Hopefully it was just uh, due to the lack of moisture and the, the drier, tougher ground and not everything germinated on par. But from what I'm seeing, at least in this corner, the stuff that didn't come up yet, there's still seed there. So with this moisture we got this weekend, that should germinate now and take off. And, fill in and make a nice cover crop for ourselves. Okay, now we're down here on the bottoms and just glancing at these cobs, they're looking really, really nice. But of course, this is our heavy ground, our really nice dirt, and it gets a lot of manure get starter fertilizer this ground definitely has a better potential than the rest of the ground especially on a drier year like this year so let's do a kernel count and see what we're looking at one two three four five six eight nine we'll call it 34 especially because the tip kind of rounded off here but i gotta say these kernels look a lot bigger than these other cobs this is a different variety i can't remember i think it's a longer day uh, I don't think we're over 100 yet. I can't, I can't remember offhand what Dad planted down here at the bottom, but we'll crack it open and see what we got for around. One, two, three, four, five, six, 16 around. So we'll whip out the calculator here. We'll do 16 times 34 gives us 544 times 0.3 for sure. Gives us that 160. Which I think we're a little more, being our kernels are a bit bigger. So we'll call it anywhere from 160 to 180. But comparing it to our no-till and our turbo-tilled stuff, this by far is the most consistent stand, most consistent cobs, plant to plant. It's looking really uniform, really nice, which in my opinion really has an impact on yield. Getting the most consistent stand possible, really consistent cobs right down the line it just looks beautiful and that's some really heavy tillage and some good germination had plenty of moisture down here even with a drier year nice heavy soil looking really good super happy with what we're seeing down here even though the kernel count isn't quite showing that it's going to yield as well as the turbo tilled stuff it uh the kernels look really good and the even stand looks really good on our way back here, we'll swing into the, the dry cow pasture next to the yard here where we have those four older dry cows. We'll see how them girls are doing. They look pretty happy out there. There's our Jersey Swiss cross. 
she's pretty spunky yet for an older cow. Very lively. And here's the real old brown Swiss. The main mama on the farm. Number 100. How you doing, girl? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Not interested? For an old cow, she's looking great. Looking beautiful, girl. Sure I can't convince you before I leave? Huh? So those are the two brown Swiss in here. Now we'll go check on the Holsteins. They're up by the bunk right now. Hey girls, how's it going? Those old dry cows seem to be doing pretty good. We've been uh, supplementing their feed with hay and grain throughout the summer here just because that pasture really hasn't uh, amounted to a whole lot. Checking our, our bigger older heifer group. They're looking really well, they're doing really well. Our new bull, he's laying in the back there. I don't know if we told you guys yet, but we had his work uh, checked up on. We had the vet here doing some preg checking. He checked this whole group and apparently he he got everybody except for one. So it might just be on her end. She might just have uh, trouble getting bred, but that's good to know because uh, he's not a very active bull. He's not super aggressive. He's not, you know, you don't catch him in the act. At least when I'm here, I haven't caught him in the act. Dad, he was kind of worried there after getting him, being he was so small. He was worried that oh, maybe he's not uh, doing his job. But according to the vet that we had come out here, that was probably already a month ago now. He's doing his job, which is great. And then over here, I wanted to show you guys, we got a really pretty cow that just calved. I won't get in there. I don't want to get her all shook up. It looks like her calves trying to nurse. She's got a beautiful black bull calf there. She's got some beautiful, beautiful markings on her. With the current cattle price, her calf, her bull calf might bring pretty good for us, being he's a lot blacker. The white running down his legs kind of gives him away, but I think if we give him a little time here on mom, sucking and being out in the pasture before we take him to the sale barn, I think he'll bring really, really good. Bull calves have been doing really well. Cattle in general, feeder cattle anyways, have been, the meat market's been really, really good. I couldn't resist, I had to get up closer for you guys. She is just beautiful when it comes to her markings. And it's great to see that her calf is doing well. Sucking on his own, looks really spunky. Putting on some size. River, come on. All the poultry is doing good. The ducks, the chickens are all doing great. The young batch of hens, they're starting to produce now. All in all, really, really good. Owen's got a great flock going. That is gonna be it for the farm update. We made it around the farm. Gave you a little brief glimpse of how things are going around here. Like I said, it's the end of September right now when I'm filming this. You guys probably won't see this till we're well into October. So let me know down in the comments how things are going in your neck of the woods, what the crops are looking like. By no means me bringing up the lack of moisture, by no means am I complaining. I'm super grateful for what I'm hearing across the country. Our neck of the woods here in Wisconsin, at least within a 50 mile radius of here, things have been pretty fortunate, I've heard, compared to the rest of the country. It sounds like Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, sounds like they definitely suffered. I came to get moisture this year. Prayers go out to you guys. Definitely hate to see the American farmer impacted by drought. So I am super grateful for what has happened here on our family's farm this year. I'm excited to see what uh, picking corn brings for us. So leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like if you enjoyed the video. And uh, also make sure to check out our videos 
if you haven't watched them all already or share them with someone who you think might enjoy them or benefit from them as well. And if you guys keep watching them, I'll keep making them.